Hello, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to sort an array on your Commodore 64. In my last video, I've created this little program here, and that is responsible for giving you your lucky lottery numbers, or at least one variation thereof. And in this case, I'm drawing six random numbers out of a pool of 49. And if you want to know how that's written and why it's written the way it is written, then um, head over to my previous video. I'm going to link to that in the description and, uh, you know, get yourself some lucky lottery numbers. But as many times when I when I run this time time after time again, it appears that the numbers are not sorted. They're random and there are no double numbers coming up, so that's all good, but they're not sorted and I'd like to display them so that the smallest number appears first and the largest number appears at the end. Much like, you know, when you look at your winning lottery ticket. An experience we've all had from time to time, I guess. Uh, sadly not with all winning numbers, I guess. And um, the way to do that in Commodore Basic is there's no built-in function that lets us do that. So in, in iOS or in, uh, in certain C frameworks, there's usually a function or a method that we can call and that'll do that for us. And PHP has that. But uh, Commodore Basic, of course, doesn't have that. And we need to do that the old-fashioned manual way. And there are several ways of sorting an array, but I'm going to use the so-called bubble sort. It's also sometimes referred to as a sinking sort. And the, the way these descriptions came about is because the, the largest number is going to bubble to the top. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the first two numbers in the array and compare them one by one. And if the first number is in fact larger than the second number, we're going to swap these around. And then we're going to look at the next two numbers and do exactly the same once they're swapped do we need to swap them again and so forth and so forth until we're there and it sounds incredibly complicated but if we just start writing this as a little sub function here or as a little subroutine in line 200 it'll become very clear um, and it's fairly easy to do let's start with a little remark here and call it bubble whoops bubble sort In line 210, we're going to start looping through our array. Uh, so in my case, that's 4i equals 1 to, well, I, ha I actually have six items in my array to sort, but in order for the sort to work, I'm only going to have to loop through it five times. And we'll see why in a moment. In line 220, I'm going to set up a second loop this time with the j. So for j equals 1 to, oh no, that's not right, is it? We're going to loop through it uh, the other way around. Sorry about that. So it's 5 to 1, step minus 1. That's very important. So in the second loop, we're going to set that up for j equals 1 to i. In uh, the next line, I'm going to take those two values, which is my my array is n here. So n j and n j plus one are basically the first two items in the array that we want to compare. So uh, I'm going to copy those into some throwaway variables like x and y. So x equals n j and y equals n j plus whoops, j plus one. And now in line 240, I'm going to compare is x in fact larger than y. So if x is larger than y, then we need to swap those two values around. So then we would like to say nj equals y and also nj plus 1 equals x. Does that make sense? Should that be the case, then swap them around. If that isn't the case, then we'll just head over in line 250 and we'll just uh, start our loop again or kind of finish our loop off and go round around again. In, two, in line 299, I'm going to return from my subroutine and that should do that. So the only thing that remains to be done now is to call this subroutine slightly further up in my little program and that is probably before I even loop through these things. So in line 100 I'm just printing an empty space out so I'm gonna 
use that line and just go and call on my subroutine. That should probably be more like a colon. And we'll see if that works. There we go, we're generating six random numbers and now we're uh, looping through them through the sorted array. So we're generating them, we're making sure there's no doubles, then we're going to go and sort them with our subroutine on line 200 and then we're going to go print them out. Let's see if it works time and time again. Very nice. Now if at the end of my program here uh, instead of end, I'm just going to go and either say run or I'll just say go to 20. And then I should get lucky lottery numbers printed time and time again. You can even add a little counter to the top and you can say draw one, draw two, draw three and so forth. And if I was on a C128 or on a plus four, I could be printing these numbers out in a, using the print using function. And then they would be all in their nice little formatted columns. I guess that's uh, something we can discuss in another video. If you want to do that, then stick around. I'll see you in that video. Uh, or if you like this one, then please share it with friends, family and total strangers. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.